The maximum Gilbert method, or sometimes known as the chemical sequencing method, can be used in the task of DNA sequencing. The method was developed by Walter Gilbert and Alan Maxim in 1977. It rapidly became popular as purified DNA could be used directly. Gilbert shared the 1980 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Paul Berg and Frederick Sanger. Walter Gilbert and Frederick Sanger shared one half of the prize for their contributions concerning the determination of base sequences in nucleic acids. Paul Berg shared the other half for his fundamental studies of the biochemistry of nucleic acids with particular regard to recombinant DNA. An overview of the method can be summarised as follows. Firstly, this method allows us to break an end labelled DNA strand at specific bases using base specific reagents and conditions. Secondly, the labelled fragments then undergo electrophoresis in a high resolution polyacrylamide gel and are then detected by autoradiography. Thirdly, the procedure orders the fragments by size and hence we can deduce the sequence of the DNA molecule. This method takes advantage of a two-step catalytic process involving piperidine and two chemicals which selectively attack purines and pyridines. The chemical dimethyl sulfide selectively attacks purines, namely adenine and guanine, and the chemical hydrazine selectively attacks pyridines, namely cytosine and thymine. The first step in the process is either purines will react with dimethyl sulfate or pyridines will react with hydrazine in such a way as to break the glycosidic bond between the ribose sugar and the base. The second step in the catalytic process is that piperidine will then catalyse the phosphodiesterase bond cleavage where the base has been displaced. Let's look more closely and detail the chain cleavage reaction at the purine base guanine as an example. This reaction, specific for guanines, begins with an end label DNA fragment. The 5' prime end label is denoted by a purple dot in this example. We methylate guanine with a mild dimethyl sulfate treatment that methylates on average 1 guanine per DNA strand. Then we treat the methylated DNA with piperidine, which first removes the methylated base and then breaks the DNA strand at the apurinic site. This slide presents as an example the various fragments created by cleavage of individual guanine bases. At the top of the slide is a 5' prime end labelled DNA fragment with the positions of the guanines indicated just below. At the bottom of the slide are all the possible fragments produced by cleavage of guanines in this DNA molecule. Note that they do not end in the guanine because the guanines that led to changed cleavage were lost. For this reason, the first fragment is just phosphate. Having identified the position of the guanine bases, this helps to detail the overall DNA sequence of the DNA molecule. The products of fragments of the cleavage reactions are resolved by size by using electrophoresis in a high resolution polyacrylamide gel. As discussed earlier, the chemicals used to cleave guanine bases are dimethyl sulfate followed by perpetine. Also, dimethyl sulfate and formic acid followed by perpetine are used to cleave guanine and adenine bases. Therefore, from the autograph we can deduce the adenine bands, and overall from these two reactions we can identify the position of the adenine and guanine bases in the DNA molecule. By treating a DNA molecule with the chemical hydrazine followed by perpetine, the bases cytosine and thymine are cleaved. Also, hydrazine and 2 molar sodium chloride cleave cytosine only, and therefore from the autograph we can deduce the thymine bands. Overall, from these two reactions we can identify the position of the cytosine and thymine bases in the DNA molecule. This coupled with the positions of the adenine and guanine bases gives us the overall DNA sequence. Here, looking at an overall example, we see as the strand is broken at each repetition of that base on separate strands of DNA, the lengths of the labelled fragments identify the position of that base. Thus, having identified each individual base and its position from the pattern of radioactive bands gathered from all four reactions, we can deduce the overall DNA sequence of that DNA molecule. The maximum Gilbert method has fallen out of favour due to its technical complexity and extensive use of hazardous chemicals. 
Although it still has important applications in the study of DNA protein interactions, nucleic acid structure and epigenetic modifications to DNA.